This week on the Men of the Movies podcast, we talk about the last Starfighter. We all have talents or gifts that we think are too weird to ever actually be useful. But if we give it to God, he'll find a way for it. Our specific brand of strange is exactly what the world needs. But we can disqualify ourselves if we don't trust the calling that we've been given. Victory or death? Maybe not. Let's discover God's truth. The movies and stories we love are gateways to see ourselves and God in new ways. Every great story borrows its power from a larger story. The story that's written on our hearts and woven into the fabric of our very being. Hello and welcome to the Men at the Movies podcast. My name is Paul McDonald and joining me both in the Riverside studio and on Facebook Live, Sarah Daniels back for more. Hey, Sarah, how are you doing today? Doing very well. Thank you. Glad to be back. We have already we've been on on Facebook for about four minutes now, and we've already we've already instigated controversy about our movie that we're discussing today. So before I get into that, I did want to talk about why we're having you back and why we picked this movie. Because we one. It's Sarah brings a depth of knowledge and an intensity that makes my own pale in comparison (laughs) (laughs) and so she's as we mentioned during the terminator podcast she's working on a book where she's deep diving into these into these these movies and it's interesting because i'm also working on a book deep diving into movies but we're doing it very differently um and so basically i said hey sarah you've got you know how many chapters four or five chapters done uh six six chapters done see already already correcting on this one. She was, she was commenting on the, the, we need a, we need a fact checker, Britt and I on could, these podcasts. You call me. If there's anything you're not sure of, just call me. <laughs> so I said, Hey, let's, let's take these, uh, let's take these chapters that you've worked on and let's talk about them on the podcast and give, so it's not all me and Britt. We'll get some diversity on here and have some different feedback, especially like I said, you know, you sent me an email like three hours before we were going to go with about <laughs> four hours worth of information. I'm just like, oh, I'm, I got to give I got to take I got to it's going to take me a minute to get through this stuff. So you, we we talked about Terminator being on here. What are some of your other chapters? Obviously, other than the last Starfighter. Um, yeah. OK. Yeah. Last Starfighter, obviously, uh, the never ending story, which I would love to do at some point. Have a lot of thoughts on that one. The Goonies, another one I would love to do at some point. Uh, the Last Unicorn and Romancing the Stone. Oh, Romancing the Stone. Now, I got to admit, The Last Unicorn is not one I'm familiar with. But Romancing really? the Stone would be awesome. Oh, I remember yeah. Romancing loving the that. Stone not that the other ones yeah. aren't, but. And I have a bunch that I've I've started on but haven't finished yet. So like um, Lady Hawk, uh, A Knight's Tale, Up. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of other ones. E.T. you had mentioned. Yes, E.T. Yep. So what is it about this movie specifically? The Last Starfighter. Why did why did why is this one of the movies that's making the cut to get in your book? And also, why was this the next one you wanted to talk about? Um, well, I sort of have the same answer for both of those questions. Um, the reason that it made the cut, um, you know, for my devotional and the reason I wanted to talk about it next was because, uh, what was really jumping out to me, you know, I had several thoughts about it, but what the, the first and foremost one that was jumping out at me was about giftings. Um, you know, mm-hmm. what each of us are born and created with, you know, what our talents are. And even though, you know, some people might, not see them as talents if it's something that you're you've been given that you're passionate about and you know you 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 live that out in your life and you want to use it and you know 
like like the pod father alan arnold you know talks about <laughs> if it's something that you know that you're passionate about that god's gifted you with and you want to do it with him and partner him with it and show it to the world in a way that it's never been done before then that is something that's valuable and good you know and i mean like like it so in this movie it's a kid who's really good at playing video games you know and it's like think of like every parent ever who said to their kid like why are you spending hours playing video games you know what good is that ever going to do anyone well this kid ends up saving the universe because he's so good at a video game you know and it's like me you know like i what's my one of my number one superpowers movie trivia you know, it's like, how is that ever going to be used ever? You know, and stuff. Well, and I'm now look at you here on the Men of the Movies I'm, podcast. I'm I'm loving podcast. It, just wallowing in all the trivia. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> writing a movie devotional with it, you know, and stuff. And how God speaks to me through movies and stuff. So, so yeah. So I just, yeah, let that be the little encouragement for this episode. If you think you have a talent that's too weird, that's never going to be used, trust me give it over to god he can show you how to use it for sure i had our pastor several years ago um gave a message on it and he called how they sort of how god stacks our gifts and how this guy and he was a musician but he was like a he loved playing the guitar but they didn't need somebody to play the guitar so he sort of learned how to do the drums and then how to mix and then how to produce And then when he got back to doing the guitar, he also knew all the things of the, the, the band basically. And so he could get up there and he, he could offer insight on how, on how to run the rhythm tracks and how to produce a a great song and a great album that, you know, he's like, Oh, I want to do the guitar. I spent all this time in the guitar and now I'm not using it. But when you just sort of, you don't force it. Like we see in the movie, you know, Alex, he's he's trying to force it. He's going to go foreign legion or he's going to do this. He wants a he needs a loan to go to college and not just city college. I'm going to a, a big college, a big school. I think that's a pretty good. And that's how really we're introduced to Alex in the movie. Um, we're going to play our first clip. Because. I think it it tees up where he's going and where what really his struggle is and not just his struggle, but our struggle. Mm-hmm. And so in this, he's playing, like always, he's playing a video game. Uh, then his girlfriend goes, his some other friends show up in a truck and they're waiting to go to the lake with him. And they get a little aggravated. They're fussing at him to say, hey, man, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Because when you're going to the lake, you're in a hurry. <laughs> and... And you see this very quick, it's, this movie does a very good job. We talk a lot about show, don't tell moments. And this is a show, don't tell moment about both who he is, who he sees himself as, and also a little bit of who he's trapped to be. Come on. Hey, Alex, how you doing, man? Just yeah. Come on, Alex. Do it, buddy. Come on. What are you doing? Come on. Come on, Alex. Hurry up. Alex, did you come yet? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 No, I don't, I don't think so. What's it this time, Rogan? You joining the Foreign Legion? <laughs> yes, sir, folks. Step right up. Meet boy adventurer Alex Rogan on the last leg of his worldwide tour to nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, Blake. You guys think I'm going to hang out here, watch you shine your pickup, go to the drive-in, get drunk and throw up every Saturday night, go to City College like everybody else. Forget it, man. I'm doing something with my life. Whoa, Mr. Serioso. Yeah? Elvira's electric is out. Oh, my, it's going to take all day. I was, I was going to Silver Lake. Honey, I know. I'm sorry. It, it's, I'm working lunch and dinner. I'm going to be in town all day. Oh, all right. Okay, Ma. I'll do it. Thanks, honey. So what you see is this guy, he's got big dreams. I don't know what's wrong with shining a pickup. I mean, I like my pickup to look nice and shiny. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he feels like he's he's out of place like you mentioned that that feeling of out of place and he's got big dreams big goals and he feels stuck and i think a lot of us can relate to that yeah yeah circumstances you know in in anybody's life 
you know, no matter what can make you feel stuck, whether it's finances or, you know, physical circumstances or health issues or, you know, I mean, the list goes on. There's lots of ways that we can feel stuck. So you, you sent me this because she, as we mentioned, she has the novelization. Now, which came first, the novelization or the movie? Uh, the, well, the novelization is based <laughs> on the screenplay. So I guess the, I, I guess, guess the movie the novel, sort of, the movie sort of, but usually if I remember correctly, I think novelizations would usually come out like a few weeks to a month before the movie, which was kind of like a big spoiler, but that's just the way that they did stuff back then. So. Cause you didn't have things like the internet back in 84. <laughs> yes. When, they, when this movie came before, out. <laughs> before they had Wikipedia and internet movie database, or even DVDs with cutscenes and commentaries. If you wanted behind the scenes info, you had to read the novelization. <laughs> yeah. But I, it was, the novelization was very important because it, it ends up talking about the people who do get recruited. And I thought that their characterization that their characterization of the people who sort of won their way into being the starfighters was an interesting thing because yeah in their society they're all the outcasts they're all the weirdos they're all the mm -hmm. the people who don't really feel like they fit in and that's what you see in Alex i mean you even see at one point he goes to his room and he's got you know a mobile of the solar system and his his head's in the stars um but he's He's burdened by life. Um, expectations of others. His mom's like, no, I need you to do this. His girlfriend doesn't want to leave granny. Cause yeah, I don't know. Granny looks pretty, pretty competent there. Know, toting granny's a pretty shotgun. spry. <laughs> 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 granny's great. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, it, it's one thing I really have to say too about Alex is as much as he, you know, like he's kind of like, like you said, a misfit, you know, kind of a weirdo doesn't really fit in he's got a really good attitude for being someone who is stuck. I mean, he could have a really poor attitude and just kind of, you know, like be like, no mom, I'm sorry. I'm not staying here to help. I've already made plans. I'm going with my friends to Silver Lake, you know, for somebody who's, let's see, he's, he's, he's getting ready to go to college. So he's got to be like 17, 18. Yeah. For somebody who's that age, he's got a really good attitude and he's very honoring to his mother. And, you know, and if, you know, he's, he's got a servant's heart, even if it isn't necessarily what he wants to go do is patch 30 year old fuse panels and yeah. plunge toilets. He still does it. And he doesn't complain like a whole lot, you know? So, which I, I thought was, was admirable. Yeah. And that's what you had mentioned in your, in, I think I, in the chapter that I, yeah. that you sent me was how that showed honor, which again is, is going to, it's a great show. Don't tell. You don't need, oh, that kid's honorable. That's a great kid. You know, you he shows you, and then when push comes to shove later in the movie, um, you see that evident. You know, he can't let, in this case, Centauri down. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Britt earlier about this movie, and he did say he thinks this was one of the first movies with Tron that used computer-generated graphics. Yeah, that is that is right. Yes. <laughs> Tron was the first one to kind of like experiment with it, per se. But this one was the first movie to use extensive use of computer graphics. And sure, it does look a little dated. But I mean, for 1984, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I because when I was watching it, I was like, man, these these graphics are like I'm comparing it to Star Wars New Hope, which came out about five years earlier. But they're not doing the computer generated stuff. They're using, you know, physical models and, you know, little X wings and Tie Fighters and that's no moon and all that stuff. Sorry, it this was seven, one it was seven years earlier, Paul. I can't help it. It was seventy seven. seven. I thought Sorry, it was seventy nine. Seventy seven. All right, it's Sorry. fine. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. That's why you're here to provide. And believe me, from the person who normally has to be Brit's fact checker of, you know, we'll throw out. I think it was this verse. And I was like, great. Now I have to see what Google says. At least you had the right book. Um, but yeah, so there, to me, it felt a, a difference because if you think about it, I mean, even seven years, to me, the graphics from the new hope felt cleaner and less obvious than from this movie, from the last Starfighter. 
But if I think I, I don't know where I'm going with this really, but this idea that Star Wars was using the best of an outdated system. Whereas the last Starfighter was using the beginning of a new system. I and mean, now most of the movies are computer generated. You know, what are we now? Almost 40 years later. Yeah. I should have saved this. Maybe we'll just store this for two years and release <laughs> it on the 40 year anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> while we're, while we're on the tech stuff very briefly, how about the soundtrack, man? The soundtrack's like half of the movie to me. It's incredible. <laughs> It, it's just oh man it is so good it, it and i don't know the guy who did it craig craig stefan i think his name i don't remember him doing a whole lot else he's not like you know john williams or alan silvestri or you know james horner or something who's done a whole slew yeah. I, he may have done a few others but i love this soundtrack it is so epic it's just incredible yeah this is definitely my wife loves these types of movies like her, one of her favorite movies is Flash Gordon. Oh my gosh. And so this, to me, had a little Flash Gordon-y feel Flash. to it. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> so I do think we do need to, to address a question that has come up that we were discussing earlier. You make the point that Alex Rogan is the champion of the Rogans between Seth Rogan and Joe Rogan. Uh, I had somebody on that said, don't tell Joe he's not saving the universe. Cause your point was <laughs> Alex Rogan saved the universe. He kind of, he, he wins the automatic championship belt of the Rogan family. And yes, I know uh, that uh, it is spelled differently. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It is. <laughs> so, I, I, I still just, I don't see how you can top saving the universe. I mean, <laughs> it's just right it's like for us uh it, we live in north carolina it's a big basketball state north carolina beat duke who are big rivals on coach k's last game ever i feel like they have the trump card for like the rest of eternity <laughs> it's like it doesn't matter how many championships duke wins carolina is always going to have the card to say yeah but we beat k on his final game uh, for those of you sports nerds out there, if people like sports and are listening to this. <laughs> so, all right. So we've got Alex. He's there and he's, and he is frustrated and he's talking to his buddy Otis, who's the caretaker. And what we see is, and this is our next clip. We'll play that. I think this is actually to me was one of the, uh, one of, I mean, you could almost say, yeah, this should be a life philosophy. This, this I quote like from Otis here, Otis. because at the end of the day, he's back to his, his video game. He's frustrated because his girlfriend didn't come back, even though she's like, I thought you were coming out there. And he's like, I guess you're having a good time. You just don't want to come back. And he's kind of venting to Otis about those frustrations. Cause we all got to have somebody to, to, to get frustrated with. But the what Otis says and the encouragement, we all need an Otis in our lives. Oh, yeah. So oh, awesome. we're going to play this clip and then, Sarah, we're going to see what kind of Otises you have in your life. Where's your Maggie? Good question. Not having a good time, I guess. Oh, and you never have a good time, Daddy. Oh, sure. I love patching 30-year-old fuse panels and plunging people's toilets. Otis, I, I never even get a chance to have a good time around here. Oh, things change. Always do. You get your chance. The important thing is when it comes, you got to grab it with both hands and hold on tight. I think it's funny. Here he is playing a video game. I never get to have a good time around here. <laughs> like I said, he doesn't complain much. He complains some. Yeah, well, but um, it's natural. Yeah, 
but no, I love Otis, man. O- Otis is a terrific character. He doesn't, he's not huge in the overall scope of the movie, but he's a nice background character. And I really love how like a few minutes after that clip you just played, he gets the whole entire trailer park up just to watch Alex break the record. Which not I think a lot is, going on out in a trailer is, park out in the desert. I, yeah, you know, that the, obviously not a lot of excitement <laughs> happening there. Like, hey, this kid's going to break the record. Everybody come and look. But I love the sense of community that's there mm-hmm. in the trailer park. Like so many people, like all these people that Alex is just serving, 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 like all day long. You know, it's like, you know, plunge my toilet, patch my fuse panel. I'm going to miss my soaps, you know, and stuff. But when it's finally like Alex's turn to, to do something, they all come running, which is fantastic. You know, and I, and they don't even know what's going on. You know, like some of the old ladies in the background are like, what's a command ship? Like what's happening? You know, <laughs> but they're just there because like, you know, they want to encourage him and support him in something that's important to him, even if it is just a video game, you know, and stuff. And, and I just, I do, I love that, that sense of community that's willing to come and cheer him on even if it's something that if you were outside of that community, doesn't look like a big deal, you know, and stuff. If it's mm. a big deal to Alex, it's a big deal to them, you know, and that's, I love that. That's fantastic. And, and like I said, Otis is the cheerleader. He's like, Hey, everybody get up here. He's going to do it. Come check it out. You know? And so that's fantastic. I love it. Well, because, you know, we do need that cheerleader. We do need that Otis because not just the one to say, yeah, it's kind of tough right now but you got to keep your eyes open. You got to be ready. So when the opportunity hits, you can grab it with both hands. Yep. And it's almost like he sees that opportunity. Yeah. He's like, Oh, he's about to break a record and he gathers everybody. And we, we do need that. And I think it speak goes back to that idea of honor because the, the trailer park community knew Alex. Like it seemed like he grew up there. He was a part of them Like he was the one he could be dependent on. And so, like you said, is because he honored them with his presence, with his abilities, with what he could do. They responded to encourage him in in sort of a moment with triumph. And even afterwards, like he's walking around like, hey, great job, Alex. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And we all feel this way. At some point. We feel called to something greater. We feel a greater purpose to our lives. We feel motivated or encouraged this sense of longing for something other than what we're doing in front of us. And and when we were going back and forth about this, the piece that I said is duty and obligation made him feel stuck. And we feel stuck, but we're not actually stuck. Because he's developing the skills, he's uh, he's in the right place. He feels stuck, but he's actually in the place that he needs to be to accomplish his his mission, his purpose, and his greater assignment. Yeah. And there's a couple ways that I think we react to that. And I think you were we were even talking about that before, with the um, because you said you had gone to that conference. Oh yeah, the Rubart Writing Academy. Yeah, back in May. Yeah. And you got a lot of really good feedback from them. Oh, yeah, I really did. And it was it was actually really amazing um, for several reasons. I mean, like it was it was amazing because, first of all, it was such a long time coming because I had registered for it two years ago you know, back in 20, <laughs> right. in January of 2020, and then COVID shut everything down. So I had been waiting for two years over two years to go to this thing, you know, and so just the long wait was, you know, made it, you know, a lot more sweeter. Um, and, you know, just so much encouragement, you know, and support there. And, you know, it's one of those things like where you're, you're going into the situation and there's, you know, a lot of people that you don't know. And, you know, like, uh, you know, Jim Rubart is one of my favorite authors. And so you get that little bit of like intimidation where you're meeting somebody that you really, you know, yeah. like <laughs> admire and stuff. And, and you know, you, you hope you don't come off as like, you know, too much of a fangirl and stuff, which, by the way, I completely did. They were like calling me <laughs> his number one fan the entire time I was there. Did you wear but, a, a Rubart t-shirt? 
No, no, he didn't. Have <laughs> but I kept spouting out little bits of trivia, which is my thing, and which he was greatly amused by, and everybody else was was impressed by. So I, you know, came off came off pretty well. <laughs> but um, I just had a lot of people, you know, like um sharing their positive impressions of me, you know, let's, let's put it that way, you know, complimenting me on, you know, like the way that I would pick up on this or the way that I understood this. And one of the, one of the big things that happened when I was there was um, an exercise that they do is the questionnaires we had to send in before you had to list your five favorite movies. And then while we were there mm -hmm. in one of the sessions, Jim would look at the five movies and pick out the theme that you know went through all of the movies the thing that was the same about all the movies and and tell oh, you the, yeah it was really interesting and tell you the theme of your life based on those movies and so me being me <laughs> started like he'd be like so does anybody else have any you know see anything that they want to you know share and stuff and of course i'm just diving right in head first <laughs> and like you know person after person there was like seven other people there and i'm going oh yeah I think the theme of this is, you know, like second chances, or I think the theme of this is, you know, like, you know, like unrequited love, you know, or something like that. And he, and everybody was just like, how do you like know that? Like, how did you get that? That's amazing. You know, that's exactly what that is, you know? And so that was, and that was, that was pretty fun. But, um, you know, so I got lots and lots of support and encouragement there. Um, and then also, uh, uh, coming a week before uh i mean i'll just my mother passed away uh, almost four weeks ago this happened a week after the academy uh so i was grateful even though it's it's weird it feels like a, another life now but i was grateful for for all of that support and encouragement um before that happened because i was in mm. i was in a really good place when that happened and also i had a lot of people come around to support me when it when it was happening so that i was very grateful for that that's and, and we've we've talked about that over the last like you said several weeks and it's just interesting how god sort of provided that community yeah before to sort of he knew that you needed your reserve tank full mm -hmm. to go into that season i emailed and asked how you were doing and i remember i, I loved what you said you're like most days are okay some really suck and some are good. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, that's, it's, uh, it's about right. Yep. But this idea, because what you got from that Academy was all these ideas. Mm -hmm. so you should do this. And one of them you're, you're diving into, right? You're getting a website. You're starting this, you're starting your own website. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, diving into it as much as I can, you know, obviously with everything that, that one happened, toe at a time with, <laughs> yes. with, with everything that happened, you know, with, with my mom's passing, I've obviously been easing back into life these past few weeks and, um, you know, trying to, to not take on too much because it's very easy for me to feel overwhelmed these days. I think that that's a pretty, a pretty normal yeah. uh, thing to deal with. Um, but I am trying to, to move forward um, with some of the stuff that, you know, I gained at the Academy plus some ideas that I've had on the back burner uh, for a while. One of them website is not quite yet. What I'm actually focusing on is a blog and the blog will eventually mm -hmm. be part of my website. Cause I'm going to have an author website, but I want to focus on the blog first because that felt doable. And um, Realm Makers, which we talked about before when, when I was on about the Terminator, that's coming up in three weeks, which I'm very excited for. Really? Oh. Talk about <laughs> community, man. I, I just, right. Getting I back to your wait. people. I yeah. can't wait to see my people. I can't wait to see my people. <laughs> Man, I was talking to some of them and like my friends that I see like once a year, like my friend Josh Chad, you know, that I talked to and his mm -hmm. wife, Sarah. He's on friend. the Facebook. He's on, yes. the, he's on the line. I saw his comment. I know. Yeah. Them and my other friends, Troy and Stacy. Stacy made a comment. You know, I'm going to see all of them there. And I, you know, they were just incredible to me in the whole like grieving process and just being so supportive you know, when, when my mom was in the hospital and when she passed, like they, they were just like, call us anytime, day or night, you know, I'd get on the phone and, and just talk and cry. And, you know, like it was just amazing. 
But I, I, I was saying to them at one point, I was like, I hope you guys don't mind that I run up and hug you when I first get there and then just not <laughs> let go for the whole rest of the weekend. You're just going to have to <laughs> piggyback me around everywhere because <laughs> I'm just so excited to see them. But um, yeah, so anyways, so I'm going to be starting a blog uh, called Forged in Film. And the website is forgedinfilm.org. It is not live yet. Well, actually, by the time we air this episode, it will be live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll, awesome. It'll, yeah. So there'll be um, a couple of entries from the devotional on there, but I want to save the devotional entries for the actual physical devotional. But it's just also going to be a place for me to post thoughts about movies that I see and, you know, things that I pick up and stuff that God shows me and, you know, stuff like that. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. And plus, you know, I want to promote my blog and this podcast at Realm Makers, you know, because people, there's you're getting a lot of shout outs for that blog name, by the way. They <laughs> love it. Isn't it? Oh man. I'm telling you, God <laughs> it is gave, a good one. God gave it to me, Paul. He <laughs> gave it to me because I was sitting there. I was thinking about all of these movies that were just like formative to me growing up that helped, you know, make me be the person I am today, mm. you know, the way they spoke to me one way or another. And so I was trying to think of some way to work that into the name, you know, and <laughs> this is so funny. The first name that I came up with was made at the movies. And I'm like, no, that sounds like the backseat of a convertible. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, okay. Some, something else, something else. And then God gave me, he just put it in my head. He just inspired me with it forged in film. And I was like, yes, that is perfect. That is that like epic sounding, like just what I want. That's totally me. That's totally what I want to put out, you know? So yeah, yeah it's going to be great. So somebody had already bought the name forged in film.com, but they're not using it. So I don't know who this loser is, but I did get forged in film.org. I know what a punk. So there, I did get forged <laughs> in film.org and that's going to, yeah, that is going to be live by the time real makers happens. So I'm going to be promoting that and this podcast because I'm going to put my Terminator chapter on as a blog post, which I will link to the podcast episode and uh, possibly this one as well. So, so yeah, I'm very excited. We're about halfway that. to a pyramid scheme right now. Just <laughs> all these links and interactions and weaving together, uh, but no. And, and so, yeah, so check out her website, forged in film.org. There'll be a link in the show notes and on our podcast, on our, on our website at men at the movies, um, because that's just, that's super exciting. Like, I think I love movies and get a lot out of them. And then I talk to Sarah and she like takes it like four levels higher. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, definitely check it out. And uh, we'll be we'll be, you know, I you're we you've got like four or five more chapters to go. And if you keep writing them. Uh, oh, I plan to do we'll several volumes. Doing... There's going to be like a whole separate volume for just like epics, like, you know, the entire Star Wars series and all of the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit movies. That's going to be like its own book. So, Yes, it it I think it is its own book, actually. It's its own three books. <laughs> Good catch, Paul. Good catch. <laughs> yeah, people is like, wait, when I tell them I like reading Lord of the Rings, they're like, you know, it's a movie, right? <laughs> So back to the movie and, and you might think that we drifted off, but I didn't <laughs> because I knew some of your story and I knew that what's going on and how we talked about, it. you've got all these ideas in times kind of a crunch. And I felt the same way this week, you know, my wife's working out of town a couple of days, so I'm trying to fit in all the stuff I don't do when she's home. She's like, Oh, you've done a lot. As I was like, that's because when you're here, I'm spending time with you. And now I'm like working until 10 o'clock in the office. And, <laughs> but there's a, there's this line that I think that you're, you, you're using. And we also see that with Alex and it's a Francis Assisi quote that I've been sort of living off of this week. It is first do what is necessary. And before you know it, or I'm sorry, first do what is necessary, then do what is possible. And before you know it, you were doing the impossible. Oh, that's good. That's really good. But it, it, you know, wisdom from the ages and the sages yeah. and all that stuff, right? That's like exactly what I've been going through right now. Wow. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> and like that. that's what we see Alex doing. Yep. 
He's doing the necessary. He's doing, you know, he's, and God does the rest. Like we think that, and in, in, I mean, you know it, if we, we've got to like have a word count for each day, or we've got to make this amount of money, or we've got to do this amount of work, or we've got, there's no shortage of good ideas. My to-do list will never be to done. <laughs> <laughs> But when I looked at my list this early, earlier this week, because I was really frustrated on Sunday night, I was like, I got all this stuff. I got to get done. But what I realized when I was looking at my list is half that stuff on there is stuff with no deadline. It's stuff that could get done whenever. Uh, like we've had a, a toilet seat lid that's been broken for months and I finally bought a new toilet seat. Well, you better get Alex in there to fix it. <laughs> I know. He's, yeah. Where's Alex Rogan when you need him? Yeah. But I was like, oh, that actually, like I wanted to do it so my wife would come home and we'd it'd be fixed. And I'd be like, oh, you know, the hero. That's what happens when you're 47. You're, you're become a hero, not by star fighting and saving the world, but by changing a toilet seat. Yeah. But I was like that. There's no pressure on that except for what I do to myself. Like when you go on vacation, like, all right, we're going to leave at nine o'clock in the morning and you're still packing the car at 10 and you're freaking out. And you're just like, this is a self-imposed timeline. And it's really easy. And that's why I was like, I've been living off that and sort of sitting with that, that quote of what's my necessary. And Alex was doing it. His necessary was taking care of his, his family, spending time with his girlfriend, dreaming, playing video games because who knew that those things are what made him into the person that the world needed. Yeah. Yep. And then the movie goes and I, I say, I pulled this quote because I think it's really funny when they're, when he gets taken, he gets kidnapped basically. I mean, this, this would not fly in 2022. <laughs> um, you know, some creeper comes up, pulls him in the car, takes off <laughs> <laughs> like, we're looking at the beginning of a law and order <laughs> law and order SVU right here. Yeah, I know. He really is. Oh God. And he's clueless. And he's like, Oh my gosh, I was playing a video game and now I'm on this other planet sitting at some briefing. And the, 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 I'm, what, what role was he? The uh, ambassador. Yeah. Uh, and, and Duran and Duran, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but yeah. All right. I knew I was at least I got that now. I was going to call him a senator or uh, something. Emperor. No, There's he's the ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> Paul does not know his American politics very well. <laughs> and so just as the response, like think of this as you have no idea what's going on. You just got in a car that some dude said, get in the car. You, he took you to this briefing. And here's what's happening. Aeons ago, our ancestors created our great frontier, a barrier of energy, encircling the peaceful systems of the universe and forever shutting out the scourge that lurks beyond. Fellow islands, because of a dark betrayal, our frontier will soon collapse. So we turn to you, Star fighters and your navigators, or of all the billions of creatures in the Star League, only you few were found to possess the uh, gift. You, and you alone, stand between us and the black terror of the Kodan. Victory or death! Victory or death! Victory or death! So that victory or death chant goes on for like another 10 seconds in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Is I mean, and how many times does that happen to us where we're sitting there? We're like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> I, but the really interesting thing was from when you sent me the novelization. Right. Cause this speech goes on for like what? Five pages. 
Yeah, yeah, it was so much more like like elaborate and you also in the novelization you obviously get you know what's going on inside the character's head too so you get what the ambassador is thinking about as he's talking and like i said i haven't read this book in like a decade or something like that so it'd been a while and i had forgotten about that and i was blown away because it, he talks she ripped for what, through it like this afternoon than- to prep for the podcast <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like the past couple of days, but yeah, <laughs> so I finished it. I finished it this morning. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do, hey, I do my research for these things, Paul. I that take was, this podcast I thought, very I, seriously. I was very appreciative of that insight because I think it adds valuable. It adds some context to what's actually happening in that auditorium there. Yeah. So he talks for what, like, like five or ten seconds. You know, basically, kind of just like a let's get him riled up, you know, a little bit type thing. But in the novelization, you find out that the Rylands as a race have actually bred any, you know, violence or, you know, desire or ability to fight at all out of themselves. They're a very placid and passive race. So that scene where all this is happening, you'll notice that all of the starfighters, none of them are Rylands. They're all alien races that have been recruited to come and fight on behalf of the Rylands because the Rylands not only don't have the ability or the desire to fight, they're physically unable to do it. And so that's why they have to go and seek out starfighters to fight for them. And I just thought that that was so interesting. I've been reading um, John Eldridge's Wild at Heart uh, lately and um you know, he just talks about, you know, how every man wants a battle to fight and a beauty to rescue and, you know, and stuff like that. And how society is like kind of breeding all of the warrior out of boys, you know, and and we're creating this society of like nice men. And it's like, okay, but what happens when you need warriors? <laughs> you know, it's right. like, what happens when there's a fight and you need people to fight? And I'm not just talking about men too, women too, you know, and what yeah. happens when you need people to fight and people don't know how, you know, it's like, that's scary. <laughs> the line that I really liked was peace and prosperity brought with them boredom and monotony. Mm-hmm. And what an indictment on society today. I mean, absolutely. And I wouldn't even say peace and prosperity, but because of the boredom, because of the monotony, we seek fights that we don't really need to be engaging in. And you see that contentious nature and road rage and um, John Eldridge in his podcast uh, recently was talking about the rise of incidents of sort of violent incidences on airplanes yeah yeah i was listening to that episode 10 a month to like 500 a month or something like that since in 2021 and it's over 300 so far in 2022 and so we, we you see that like you have this sort of aggression you get bored you want to do you have to do something and in that idea that the people were there because they couldn't defend themselves. But that in their other society, they were all sort of Alex Rogans. They were all outskirts. They were all outcasts. They were the weirdos, the, the one, but those were the ones who had the gifts that were necessary for survival. Yeah. And also along with what you were, you were saying is that the, the whole war that they ended up fighting was born out of betrayal the ambassador's son zur betrayed right. his own race and joined the codan because you know he was in the society of you know peace and prosperity breeds you know boredom and contention and so he was going to he was going to take it because he's like you know like those people causing fights on airplanes and stuff you know it's like they they they're looking for fights you know and stuff and and if we don't raise up our sons and daughters you know like with honor like to to Mm -hmm. to fight as warriors to stand for truth then they're just gonna pick fights over stupid things you know it's like they're not gonna to fight for the right things you know for the the good things the honorable things for truth you know and justice you know stuff like that 
Yeah. And as expected, when you're sitting there and you're like, this is all news, new information. You guys are all super excited about victory or death. And Alex is there. And and I love that scene is just so funny as he's like crawling out of the audience. <laughs> he's like, there's been some mistake. <laughs> and he ends up leaving. You know, I'm nutshelling it here. Um, he, he leaves, he goes back to earth. Centauri takes him to earth. But what I love is how, and I'm going to play the, the, the clip of that conversation, but I want to say that if he goes to shame, he never comes back. Yeah. But his, what could be perceived as weakness, cowardice, not in it is actually what saved his life. Yeah. And again, for again, I say, how can we apply that to us? It's, you know, we, we think that in this situation, you're just like, no, I, this is no, this is crazy. This is not, this is not what I signed up for. I played a 25 cent video game. And there's times that it's okay to say, all right, I'm glad you picked me, but this isn't my time. I'll be back when I'm ready. And I mean, as you see in the movie, he, you know, things happen. He becomes ready because the fight enters earth and all this other stuff. He's like, Oh, I, I, you know, but in that moment, what I think for, for us so many times is we're like, Oh, I can't handle this. And we either stay and get blown up (laughs) or we leave and sort of pile the shame and regret on ourselves to the point that we never re-engage. I want to play. This is the last clip that I have because after this sort of the movie gets, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah. But I think this is the important thing of, of how do we handle this? You see, it's almost, this is the climax of the movie for me. You see a guy, he's stuck. He has big dreams, but he's burdened by life. He's burdened by expectations. He's burdened by limitations. He gets the opportunity and wastes it, right? He doesn't do what Otis says and grabs it with both hands. He's yeah. like pushes it away with both hands. And we see the reason here. So Centauri brings him back. He's having this conversation. Centauri tosses him something. He's like, hey, before you go here, take this just in case you change your mind. And I think this is what keeps us both from going in the first place, but also giving ourselves that second chance. Oh, Alex! Here! Hey, listen, I can't take a present from you, Centauri. Oh, he reduces me to poverty again and he thinks I'm giving him a present. What a world this is. What is it then? It's a second chance, my boy. If you change your mind, just tap the communal crystals. Keep it. Ah, Alex, Alex! You're walking away from history. History! Did Chris Columbus say he wanted to stay home? No. What if the Wright brothers thought that only birds should fly? And did Galoka think the Yulus were too ugly to save? Who's Galoka? Never mind. Listen, Centauri, I'm not any of those guys. I'm a kid from a trailer park. If that's what you think, then that's all you'll ever be. And if there's a line that this, like both those two lines, the ones from Otis about grabbing opportunity with both hands when it comes up. But then if that's what you think, that's all you'll ever be. This is actually probably the more important one. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I, those, yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Those two quotes I think were key for me from the whole movie. And you're right, especially this one too. Because that was another thing that was really, you know, impressed upon me at the the Rubart Academy was the power of belief. That was actually part of my theme, you know, from from my favorite movies is uh, I'll just really quick read you the the quote that I got that Jim wrote to me. Uh, Sarah, your life is a massive light that illuminates what could be in a way few other lives do. You infuse people with the hope of what could be, then show them that it is absolutely possible if they would open their eyes and see, open their eyes and believe. And so basically, my theme of my life is helping other people believe 
who they really are and what they can really do. And which I thought was super cool. <laughs> 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 uh, but again, just like the power of belief, because the enemy lies to us all the time about everything, especially about who we are and what we can do. It's like, it's like in the Terminator, you know, and stuff, you know, how Sarah Connor starts off as this, you know, little meek, mild, wimpy waitress. And, you know, the enemy knows that she's going to eventually become this incredible warrior whose, you know, son is going to save the world and stuff. And so he's going to do everything he can to stop her from becoming that. And it's the same thing with us. The enemy is going to try to do whatever he can to stop us from becoming who we're destined to be, you know, these like warriors of God using whatever our giftings are, whatever the, it's a playing a video game really well, use a movie trivia really well, you know, whatever, even if other people think it's super weird, you know, and stuff. If you, I, I love that. But the, the power of belief is so key, you know, and stuff. And, and that was one of the things, like I said, that was really impressed upon us at the Academy when we were leaving Jim's like, listen, remember what happened here because you're going to go home and the enemy's going to try to make you forget everything that you learned and everything that was poured into your life. That's what he's all about is trying to make us forget. You remember, like print it out, read it every day, repeat it to yourself, but don't forget who you are in Christ. It, it was just, it was super powerful. So yeah. And it's, so it's exactly what Centauri is saying. If that's what you believe about yourself, then that is all that you will ever be. Oh yeah. That's so key. That's so key in life. It reminded me of the Lion King thing is remember who you are. Yes. And <laughs> because it, that's where Satan will hit us is our identity. You yes. see it. When 100%. he was tempting Jesus, if you are, if you are the son of God, mm -hmm. if you are the son of God. Yeah. And in the garden, did God really say, did God really say these things? Did God really call you? Are you, it's like, you're not a saint. I know what you've done in your past. Mm -hmm. You're not a, you know, for Alex, you're not a starfighter. You ditched them. When you had the the first chance, the whole first victory or death chant, and you're out of there. And it does the same thing. Are you, you know, you're, you can't do this. You can't do that. Who are you to think that you can do anything? You know, it's a kid from a trailer park. And it's only when, you know, in the, in the meteor there with Griggs, Grig, what was his name? Greg. Grig, no S, no O, just Grig. <laughs> and he's like, oh, if only there was a starfighter to take it to you, do your plan. And it's only when he said, I think there's a starfighter left. It's it's yeah. when he said, I am a starfighter. Yes. That's when they had the chance. Yes. And I I put this in my chapter, too. Um, like, I love how God is a God of second chances and how he can use our failures to 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 like make make his own will like go through no matter how bad we screw up he can use that it's like um like okay like you were saying earlier if alex had decided to stay he would have died with all of the other starfighters but because of his fear and his anxiety and his like refusal to accept his destiny and believe who his he was his failure yes his failure he left and that saved his life and in doing that, it saved all of Rylos. The whole race of Rylans was saved because of Alex's fear and failure, which blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's it's like it's like in the Bible when Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, okay? And then they spent their entire lives feeling horrible about that and meanwhile joseph is over here going through all of these trials and tribulations but he winds up second in command to the pharaoh and when his brothers finally do come and he reveals himself to them he says what you used for my death god used to save you like their evil intentions that were not of god god used to save their lives what <laughs> it's right well and even going a step back the people remember they were going to kill Joseph. And so, but it was the Ishmaelites 
who came along to, and they were like, oh, well, here's an Ishmaelite caravan. Let's sell them instead and we'll make some money off of this. And who are the Ishmaelites? But the descendants, the illegitimate, <laughs> the illegitimate <laughs> descendants of Abraham. Yeah. Their grandfather. Yeah. So, and so I it was mean, like, once again, like there's a Abraham's mistake being mistake. used yeah. to save lives. Unbelievable. Because I look back, I have, I have mistakes. I have stuff yeah. in my past. Oh yeah. And I'm like, man, I wish I didn't like for my kids. I wish they didn't have to go through a divorce. Yeah. But then God's like, no, they, I can redeem that. I can redeem the worst things that you've done. Yes. If you'll Come let on. me. Come on. <laughs> but we are like, no, no, I need to fix it. I need to like, <laughs> no, just let me do it and just yeah. go where I lead you and then be who I tell you you are. Yeah. Or I can't be fixed. I'm total crap. I'm just no good for anything. You know, it's right. God is so amazing. Who else does that? Like who else uses our failures and our worst things about ourselves? To save us, to save other people, to get his will across. That, that blows my mind. <laughs> it's just so amazing. Right. And that's what you, you see in this movie. And, and again, where is where does Alex want to go in the beginning of the movie? To some other college. <laughs> At the end of the movie, he is basically the now lead instructor of Starfighter Academy. Because all the other Starfighters are dead. So they yeah. need a new band of starfighters because the bad guy somehow escaped. I don't know. I'm not asking too many questions. <laughs> but again, this whole idea of we have a God who does immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. But not when we're forcing it, not when we're doing it, but when we let him have our his way with us. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you spent the next three weeks working on the stuff you're trying to work on, not just f not just focusing on the necessary, focusing on all the things so that, you know, you go to realm makers, you're like, look what I have done. Then that's, you're going to get that. You're like, oh, that's great. But if we walk with God in this, if we submit and walk humbly with him, yeah. go where he leads us then, you know, it might end up getting us kidnapped in a faraway <laughs> planet. <laughs> well, he definitely does take us places off of our grid. I mean, oh, 15 for sure. years ago, I never would have pictured myself working on the staff of a church in New Hampshire that I didn't even know existed at that point. So that's for sure. Yeah. It's Morgan talks a lot about that. Morgan Snyder with the wild at heart team and, he said, so often we we live in the decade, but measure by the day. Look how much I've got done. And then we look at how much farther we have to go. What we should do is live in the day and measure by the decade. Because when yeah. you look back 10 years ago, like when I look back 10 years ago, radically different person. Oh, my gosh, Never yes. would have imagined I'd be doing a podcast. Never imagined I wouldn't be working as a nurse. I thought that was my life. And now I'm like, oh, I might actually be starting to get engaged with making movies and figuring out how can I do that? How can I make stories that bring hearts to life? Not in a preachy sort of way, but a like, wow, that's a really awesome story. Like The Last Starfighter yep. or, or Terminator or E.T. or any of these other movies that we're, we've been talking about, Sarah. Yeah. So you got any last thoughts, any wrap up comments? Nothing major, except I just I, I just want to add that I just do love the ending, you know, how he comes back for Maggie, you know, and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> throw my throw my my woman, my woman hat in the ring there. <laughs> <laughs> and you're men at the movies podcast. But no, I I love how Maggie is, you know, scared to go with him, but more scared to stay behind without him. And yeah. even though she does not know what she is going into, I mean, at least Alex had a little bit of an idea because he played the video game and stuff like that. She has no idea what's out there or what she's going into. She just knows that she loves Alex and she wants to be with him. And that is enough for her. And she trusts him and 
I, I think that's great. And I, I really love the end of the movie, how he comes back for her, because even though he's been given this, this really high priority position, you know, of, of influence and, you know, he's got a whole world that is like celebrating him now and stuff like that. You know, he, he wants Maggie at his side, you know, to, to share that with him and, and to be with him and to have that life together with her. He doesn't want to leave that behind, you know, and stuff. And so he's like, all right, you know, I'll stay, but I'm going back for my girl. Cause she's got to be with me. Right. And so I think that's terrific. Well, and not to super over spiritualize it, but that's what Christ has done. I've yeah. gone to prepare a place for you. Yeah. I'm going to come back. And yeah. that's what, you know, we're, we're doing this b b through the Bible in a year program. And so we're reading the Psalms and there's so many, basically the Psalms are like, where I am is terrifying. <laughs> but as long as you're here, God, I can make it through. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time and, and going live on Facebook and just joining me again here on the podcast. I really appreciate it. It has been a blast and I can't wait to come back again. Yep. We'll get you on the schedule. No, for sure. So this has been Paul McDonald and Sarah Daniels talking about the last starfighter. Check it out. Check out our YouTube channel and, uh, check out my blog. <laughs> yeah. Check out forged in film.org. It's going to be up. It's going to be live. You never know. It's going to come out, but we'll <laughs> know that it, it is, it will be accurate. Because yes, she is a fact checker. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's coming out of us. We have no fact checkers here. So uh, thanks again for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you join us next time here on the Men at the Movies podcast. Something inside has been awakened. I can no longer be who I was before. But if I am no longer who I was, who am I to be? Who am I to be?